Hello, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinger show with I, your host, Agostino Zinger. And this is episode number 778. That is 778 of the Agostino Zinger show featuring I, your host, Agostino Zinger. And I hope you're doing well on this particular episode, which is number 778. Say it again, say it again, say it again. I've gotten some feedback from people telling me that I repeat myself too much. So you know what I do? You double, you triple, you quadruple down and down and down. And you never flip and apologize, even though I do apologize. Even though I don't, even though I do, even though I don't, even though I do. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hope you are wherever you are. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm actually pretty good now that Man City have just beaten Tottenham. Um, I'm recording this sometime early on a Tuesday. Manchester City have just beaten Tottenham 2-0 away from home, which basically secures a title for them. I should be rooting for Arsenal to win the title because Man City are my, you know, rivals of my dear United. But because Man City are essentially an, a club backed by all your money and they're soulless and they don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter how many titles they win, no one will really care. And they don't really have any fans, so it's not like you're going to get trolled online or anything. But just imagine what it would have been like if Arsenal would have won the Premier League, especially under Arteta, especially under these certain players. They would have been unbearable, even though they deserve to win it. Even though there's a there's a part of me that thinks they are long, they're, they're, they're kind of overdue a, a Premier League, especially because it will be pretty nice if Arsenal could manage to get a Premier League title while Pep is still at City. So City are at their pomp, they have the best manager in the world, they're playing the way they play, and also still are able to win a title in front of them. That would be a really good feather in their cap. But Arsenal fans, the fans of Arsenal are so unbearable, it just makes it untenable. It makes it unimaginable that I could ever cheer for Arsenal to try to win the league. Even though I would want the club to win it, even though I think the players deserve it, even though I would like Arteta to win it, even Arteta as well, as a manager, as a personality, he kind of annoys me. He's got a bit of a smug, pretentious type of attitude, you know, whatever. But maybe it's just how he comes across. But I would actually like the, the the players, the managers, the coaching staff, the medical department, all the people should be rewarded by William Tower because the way they've transformed that club from where they were before into what they're doing now, basically for two seasons in a row, they've been the only viable challenger to Man City for the Premier League. Uh, Liverpool have kind of fallen by the wayside. You have to commend them for that, man. The way they've been able to go from like eighth to fifth to now finish in second consecutively in two seasons, props, like literal props, especially someone like Edu, considering that there were some fans out there, mainly troops and Lee Gunner and those type of people who basically were calling for Arteta's head when he finished eighth. And now look what he's done. Pretty decent. So they deserve to win it. They don't, you know, sorry, I would like to see them win it. In sports, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you flip in take or earn so i guess they have to just wait for their turn but i could never imagine myself cheering for them because their fans on social media especially especially on twitter oh my god they're unbearable their fans alone will make you hate arsenal which is weird because they're a great club a lot of great history fantastic players play a trusted brand of football they've usually got good kits that's another thing to like about them but their fans will make you hate them and unfortunately at this point, I'm glad City won. Hopefully, they wrap it up and we can kind of done. Because even when City win the league, the hype dies down after like a day. No one talks about it anyway. If Arsenal were to win it, it will be non-stop fucking coverage for like a month maybe. You know what I mean, up until flipping the Euro. So, I can't handle that. So, I'm happy they didn't win it. Happy they didn't win it. Talking about unbearable fans. I was just thinking today about the aftermath of the Drake v. Kendrick battle. And I thought to myself, like, what have we learned so far? What have we learned? What have we as a as a, as a population of, you know, hip hop listeners and fans and stuff around the world? What have we learned during this, you know, now that the, the battle has kind of ended and Drake maybe waved the white flag or put a pause on the beef? Essentially, you know, even me being a hardcore Drake fan, you would have to admit Kendrick probably did win. Not like us definitely pipped um, the, him in the lead. 
I'd say he probably was up like 4-2, maybe 3-2 if you're being charitable to Drake. But he definitely won the in the intimacy, in the immediacy, the battle, right? Of the songs, of the disses and shit. Even taking into account all the lies and the fabrications, whatever everyone did, both sides engaged in some weird, really weird nefarious tactics, which I wasn't really a fan of, I'm not going to lie. Um, all the other kind of, oh, I trolled you to do this, I've set this, planted this. It's all it's all a misnomer. But in terms of just the, lyricus, the lyricism, the records, the timing of the records, the videos, I think you can, you can say, you know, the fans definitely won. But I guess in terms of who pick a winner between Drake and Kendrick, I'd say Kendrick did win either 4-2 or 3-2. Cool. No problem. And especially not like us being a, an amazing record. Probably one of Kendrick's best bops for a while, right? Really, really good tune. Um, and I think it's going to age fantastically well as well. That's the kind of tune that you probably don't pay attention to it now if you're not paying attention to the beef. But later on, it's going to age very, very, very well. So I pick up Kendrick for managing to pull that out of his um, sock. Because I read somewhere, which is crazy, but I read somewhere he recorded like 10 songs in like a day or something crazy like that can drink this is the drake and of those 10 not like us was one of them which is absolutely insane to think that he was able to you know make a hit in a day it's fucking wild but um clearly you know he kind of reminded i think a lot of people who aren't big kendrick fans because i think kendrick has that weird to the to the majority of people i think kendrick is kind of seen a little bit like j cole if you're into kendrick you're into him if you're not you're you're really not so I think people who don't really pay much attention to Kendrick because he's not that active, because he doesn't really collaborate with people, I think they're reminded of his greatness when he battled um, with Drake. And I think on the flip side, Drake also, even the people that hate him, have to respect the fact that he can rap. Like, he can rap. Like, there's no denying it. Whether you believe he writes his records or not or whatever nonsense, in this particular beef, when it came to going back and forth with one, pe one person who everybody refers to as a boogeyman, Drake held his own. Yes, he ended up losing, but he still held his own. He didn't get I don't think he got embarrassed. Um, if anything, the misstep that he made was probably towards the end. But again, I don't think it was an embarrassment. I think he held his own against the guy. And they went bar for bar, you know, um, song for song. And in the end, the fans won, especially Kendrick fans. Kendrick fans have been starved of new music from Kendrick for a while. No real update on when he was going to drop anytime soon. I think before this beef, the idea was that Baby Keem would be dropping another album, I think. I think the idea was Baby Kim would drop before Kendrick dropped. So there was no real timeline for him to ever hear a new Kendrick record ever again. So the fact that we got so many in such a short space of time, incredible. And there might be some more dropping later on down the line. But one thing I also came away from this is both fan bases are annoying. Kendrick has parasocial, sycophantic fans. Also, Drake has the same level that make you want to question, are you really a fan? Because I'm a fan of Drake, obviously more than Kendrick, but I still appreciate Kendrick as an artist. But it honestly made me think like, am I actually a fan? If I'm not so like hell bent on arguing every minute, calling people names, reading into every little thing that they do, sucking them off online. Some of the things I was seeing online, I was like, gross. You know what I thought actually, when I was seeing some of the conversations online, I was like, I understand now why women and gays hate sport. I understand why they hate like heteronormative, you know, lad behavior, sport culture, because it's kind of the same sort of vibe. Guys who are like acting as if, like, myself included, acting as if like what I say about United is, is going to have any sort of impact on the club, getting overly passionate about things that I cannot influence in any way, shape or form, getting really, really worked up about it. And that's what you saw with guys online when it came to the Kendrick and, B and Drake stuff. It's almost as if they took it personally. Which is in interesting because I seem like on both sides, you've got Kendrick fans who kind of embody who Kendrick is as a person. The things that he says about the world, how he views himself as a black man, socioeconomic conversations, relationships. Like they kind of they kind of like Kendrick because of his worldview. And maybe they see Drake as the complete opposite. But I didn't understand this narrative that was existing online where they kind of tried to dismiss anything Drake might have done that was good. Almost as if like, oh, it doesn't matter. Kendrick's the best. It's like, okay, cool. I understand you like Kendrick, but it doesn't mean because you like Kendrick that Drake is irrelevant. Or I got the impression even worse that people were trying to make it seem as if like Drake was Taylor Swift. As if he's like, you know, because I know we've all done it. I've done it myself, right? You see Taylor Swift's numbers. 
you see the flipping streaming numbers you see the first week sales i think the album that just came out that was like 36 records or something two disc cd right two disc fucking album i think it did like a million in a week or something right first week i think it's he sold like a million in a week so i think we all done the same thing where we think hold on let me go listen to some taylor swift let me go see what the fucking hype is about then you listen to it and you're like this is fucking garbage right because you because your brain can't understand how do the masses enjoy this and then i play it and it sounds terrible but collectively i think all of us especially if you're not like a a white woman right or a white girl of a certain type of background it's just not going to be for you but the, to kind of compare or to draw similarities between drake and taylor swift is so insulting legitimately is there's no way you can say drake is anywhere near the same level of horribleness and crappy as taylor swift is but that's what you got to see and then the other end drake fans were calling kendrick like some dusty rapper who had no right to go back and forth with drake it was just insane on both sides it was actually insane which is why i was kind of happy it all kind of died down because i was kind of getting a bit annoyed and a bit fed up and tired of the debates I really didn't care towards the end. I was like, whatever, man. Keep dropping. If they drop, he drop, whatever. I'm just tired of everyone trying to use the beef as a chance to somehow inform people that they know more about hip hop than other people and read into things. It was it was almost getting like conspiratorial, you know, swap fucking, you know, tin hat, tin foil hat type level of looking into things and drawing correlation between dates and eye color and fingernail polish and hair and pictures of people's apartments and cross life go away go away go away it's not that deep it never has been they put out some records whatever and that was it god almighty and now look at us drake fans We've got some good records to come off the back of it. Like I think take those Drake records that he put out and then put them together with the Drake records that he put out towards the end of um, For All The Dogs, right? Those extra records that he put out because everyone said they didn't like the album. So he dropped a six track EP with just boom bap raps. You put those you put those six tracks and you put the tracks he put out with the, drip, with the Kendrick beef together. You've got a fucking banging EP <laughs> or an album. That's probably the best album he's ever released. On the Kendrick side, You've got a fucking hit record in Not Like Us, a legit hit record that's going to age like fucking fine wine. And you've got amazing, you know, soul destroying records you know, that he released previously as well. So everybody won. Both sides won. But niggas out here were just crying and complaining about things that don't really make any sense. So whatever. I'm happy it's over. I really am. Um... I also don't like this narrative that I'm seeing online where everyone's like, oh, um, <laughs> they want to see Drake take a break or something. Like now it's become like, oh, Drake is too is too uh is too active. He puts out too much music. I want to see him disappear. It's like the Kendrick the Drake fans that hate Kendrick are also saying the same thing about him. Oh, he's not active enough. He has no right to say what he's saying. Drake it's like, bruh, whatever, man. I'm just here for the good music. I don't care if they drop it next week in seven years. It doesn't matter to me, really. And there's a real, there's a lot of kind of hullabaloo put on this whole idea. If you take break, that you're going to come back harder. It doesn't really make any sense, really. Um, some artists do perform better if they just drop back to back. Others need a break in between, but there's no correlation between taking a break and creating your magnus opus. It doesn't exist. That, it doesn't work that way. Every artist is different. Enjoy the music. Enjoy what they put out there and just keep it moving. But again, you know, what do I know when it comes to this stuff? What do I know? Absolutely jack crap. I know absolutely nothing, but I'm safe for one thing. I'm glad it's over. I'm flipping glad it's over. <laughs> That's what I can tell you for sure. Because it was getting annoying on the timeline, man. Honestly, I was getting fed up of all the flipping debates. I really was. I really was getting fed up of the debates. Um, Moving on from that one, let's talk a little bit about this update, courtesy of OpenAI. OpenAI introduced ChatGPT 4.0 which is essentially an upgrade on the 3.5 I think they put out recently. It's not chat GPT-5 yet. They haven't got to that level just yet, but the new features on GPT-4.0 are pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. But if you're Rabbit AI, if you're the Humane Pin, you're going to be kind of pissed because they might have killed your product in one update. And now there's rumors floating around on the interweb that OpenAI have linked up with Apple 
they're doing some sort of like deal together where you're going to have chat gpt integration built into apple which then might end up replacing siri so essentially they've killed rabbit and they've killed humane i think so because they're creating standalone hardware pieces that are going to utilize a whole ai assistant thing look kind of crazy anyway let me give you an update or kind of overview on it this is courtesy of the open ai website they say the following um gpt40 is our newest flagship model that provides gpt4 level intelligence but is much faster and improves on the capabilities across text voice and vision Today, GPT-40 is much better than anything existing model and understanding and discussing images you share. For example, you can now take a picture of a menu in a different language and talk to JetGPT-40 um, to translate it, learn about the food's history and significance, and get recommendations in the future. Improvements will allow you to have more natural real-time voice conversations and the ability to converse with JetGPT with real-time video. For example, you could show GPT a um, live sports game and ask it to explain the rules to you. We plan to launch a new voice mode with these new capabilities in alpha in the coming weeks with the early access of plus as we roll out broadly to make advanced ai more accessible and powerful worldwide uh, four zeros language capabilities have improved across quality and speed and gpt is also supports more than 50 languages across sign up and login we are beginning to roll out four zero to gpt plus and team users with the availability to enterprise users coming soon we're also starting to roll out gpt free with usage limits today plus users will have a message limit up to five greater than three users and team and enterprise users will also have higher limits now all that just sounds like words and jumble to you so let me show you some videos to show you the power of gpt40 because this is pretty impressive this one is a live demo of real-time translation just imagine how much of a game changer this is going to be for the traveling community just for business overall relationships whatever it may be if you're out there and you want to go travel to tokyo and get yourself some japanese bussy this might be a good tip this might be a good tool for you this might be a good tool and if you're one of those lads that likes to go hungry and smash those fucking prozies this also might be a good fucking tool for you watch this clip we asked the live audience on x to submit a few requests for what they would like us to try out here so i will take a couple of prompts okay bot gaskar wants to know if gpt 4 o is capable of real-time translation. Mark, you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it? let's do it. Right. Yeah. I, I um, speak Italian, it. so oh, we can okay, just cool. do English let's Italian. Let's try to do English Italian. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? How's cool. your day going? I'm uh, doing great. So I would like you to function as a translator. I have a friend here who only speaks Italian, and I only speak English. And uh, every time you hear English, English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Is that good? Perfetto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare. Cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci... Come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Great. <laughs> Looks like it works. <laughs> How amazing is that? How amazing is that? Real-time translation with very, very little latency. So when you speak, the AI assistant replies back in basically milliseconds. So it's undiscernible from like a regular translation tool really flipping cool the possibilities for this are endless obviously i'm just attributing it to bussy and prozies but business wise family family wise it's absolutely incredible it might have killed duolingo right it might have killed the basically the polygon industry which i don't think it has because i've always been a stick i've always been fascinated with learning new languages um i've tried and failed well not tried and failed i've tried and not stuck with learning a few over the years um i've been really immersed and kind of checking 
from afar the polygot flipping scene i watch a ton of videos on that sort of stuff it's always fascinating watching people kind of walk into random places and just speak the native language of the place that they're in and suddenly change the whole dynamic of the conversation they were having and suddenly open up a whole different part of the world and of the region they're in all this malarkey it's really fucking fascinating i love it personally and i think in general um being the world traveler that i am being the flipping negro renaissance man that i am it's pretty imperative that i learn all the languages especially especially you know you know you know so anyway i think that's a pretty impressive tour here's another tour this is obviously the voice tour look at this vision tour look at how this chat gpt 40 incorporates the vision aspect of this vision meaning it can use the camera lens to basically you know give you bits of information and whatnot just watch this particular demonstration so the next one is from burrito john 78 who asks <laughs> can you tell what you're feeling just by looking at your face barrett you want to give this one a try absolutely let's try it out <laughs> Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there, what's up? How can I brighten your day today? Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna show you um, a selfie of what I look like, and then I'd like you to try to see what emotions I'm feeling based on how I'm looking. Sounds like a fun challenge. Go ahead and show me that selfie, and I'll put my emotional detective hat on. By the way, the voice is a bit too horny for me. I would like to dial down the horniness and the flirtiness of the voice. I'm not too sure if this is on purpose, but it almost sounds a bit like the voice at the beginning of like naughty america <laughs> you know those videos right if you don't know those videos or if you pretend like you don't know you're lying but it almost sounds like one of those type of voices at the beginning of those zorno movies the little clips that they play the voice is a little bit too horny for me a little bit too cam girly they need to tone down the flirtation and it'll be fine but i still love it okay so here's me so what kind of emotions do you think i'm feeling Hmm, it seems like I'm looking at a picture of a wooden surface. Oh, you know what? Um, that was what? the thing I sent you before. Don't worry, I'm not actually a table. Um, okay, so, so take, a, take another look. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful. Oh, oh, you know what it is, actually? It just reminded me, I'm closing my eyes. You know what this voice reminds me of? You know what this voice reminds me of? HR and front of, front of house. This reminds me of front of house girls at a co-working space or HR girlies at your workplace. All HR women speak like this. All front of house girls who work at a co-working space or like a private members club, they have this type of voice. Oh my God, how are you? It's like over, over, uh, overtly familiar, right? Like, what? What do you mean, how are you? you huh? Like, <laughs> it's just very like, it's just very, it's just very, like, you're not too sure what to do. Like, am I, am I meant to, like, tongue you down right now since I walked in? Are we meant to just snog right now? Or are you meant to just show me to my room? Or give me my key? What's going on here? <laughs> With a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement? Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. Care to share the source of those good vibes? Yeah, no. I Fucking now, what? Bro. I'm not gonna lie, if this if this AI keeps talking to me in this way too often, I might have to pull out my piece and just slap it on the front of my iPhone. See what happens there. What do you see now, eh? Might have to do that, might have to pull out my piece and just slap it on top of the iPhone camera and say, what do you see? <laughs> what do you see? Is that a full moon? <laughs> Big up Bernie Mac. But yeah, I thought that was pretty impressive, right? So big up them. I thought that was really, really, really impressive. So big up to OpenAI for such an impressive showing. But the other thing was the one that was really impressive and probably would hurt a lot of these companies. So if you do, if you remember correctly, or if you if you don't remember, let me just remind you that there are these two leading AI companies at the moment that are creating um, standalone AI devices. And the idea behind it is to kind of pull you away or to kind of, you know, pull you away from being so dependent on using your iPhone for everything. And I don't really know why. I think it probably would have been better to work on an app, but a lot of them basically went to work on the software and the hardware itself. So two of the main um, people in the AI, two of the main companies in the AI um, field who are working on these hardware specific things 
are this company called Rabbit that has the Rabbit R1, which is a beautifully designed um, AI assistant, to be honest. So this particular Rabbit R1, I'm sure you've seen it. That's an AI assistant. It's this kind of orange rectangular device with this really nice navigation click wheel and a camera on the front. And it basically works the same way. It's a virtual assistant and you can kind of use it in the same way that they're using for ChatGPT 4.0. The other one that's been doing some numbers online and has been getting some bad reviews, unfortunately, is the Humane AI pin. Now, the AI pin is probably the most interesting in terms of its interface because you're meant to use it kind of like you, you, it's a pin you put on your it's almost like a lapel that you put on your shirt with a magnet um on the back and then it kind of can beam a it can beam the menu onto your palm of your hand so it's kind of like it kind of reminds you of like computing that you see in sci-fi movies so it's a bit more interesting because you use it with gestures and whatever it may be so it's quite interesting but obviously unfortunately the reviews haven't been good because the software in it isn't running too great and there's too much latency and delays when it comes to putting your messages through now, unfortunately for two these two companies, they might have been completely killed because now that OpenAI is rumored to be linking up with Apple, if they integrate ChatGPT 4.0 into Apple products, we, most of us already have Apple phones, they essentially kill the market of AI assistant hardware. And the reason why I say this is because of this particular video. Look at this video, courtesy of OpenAI. No, courtesy of, of Google, sorry. Look at this video, courtesy of Google, with their own AI assistant, because this could basically work the same way as ChatGPT 4.0. This basically works the same way, and it will probably kill OpenAI, sorry, um, ChatGPT. Sorry, no, it will probably kill Rabbit R1 and um, the Humane Pin, because it's already integrated into their phones, smartphones that you already have in your phone, such as an Android or an iPhone. Let's do some tests. Tell me when you see something that makes sound. I see a speaker, which makes sound. What is that part of the speaker called? That is the tweeter. It produces high frequency sounds. Give me a creative alliteration about these. Creative crayons color cheerfully. They certainly craft colorful creations. What does that part of the code do? This code defines encryption and decryption functions. It seems to use AESCBC encryption to encode and decode data based on a key and an initialization vector, IV. That's right. What neighborhood do you think I'm in? This appears to be the King's Cross area of London. It is known for its railway station and transportation connections. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? Yes, I do. Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. <laughs> so essentially, that feature alone will kill most of these AI companies. But I was also thinking, watching this demo and watching these AI system things overall, how useful will it be to most of the population? Because a lot of this stuff will require you to be inquisitive, curious, and ultimately a Google person. I'm a Googler, right? If I have a query in my head that I want to find out, I Google. Some people don't. Some people don't like Googling. Some people just like to have conversations and just be ignorant of the facts and just kind of riff off what they know and just have a bit of banter. And they actually don't like the idea of someone pulling out their phone and Googling and finding out exactly what's going on. And most people just don't care that much about discovering the world around them, you know? So I wonder who's actually going to use this broadly, who's actually going to be using this, you know, um, all the time to like book their holidays or, cause I don't know about you guys, but I quite enjoyed the almost tactile nature of booking your own holiday of sorting out your Airbnb or your hotel, finding out if you need to do a currency exchange or you can withdraw money there, what you're going to go see, um, you know, bookmarking, maybe stuff you want to go check out on YouTube, um, whatever, booking your flights, your destination, your your car hire, all that stuff by itself is pretty fun to do. So to, you know, segment that off all to an assistant to sort out for you, it doesn't make life that interesting, to be honest. So I'm curious to see 
how this is going to be implemented widely across the board because when i was looking at this stuff i was thinking hold on this is mostly for people like myself who love to google and love to kind of find out things just to for the sake of finding out things but i don't know if the majority of the wider public give a fuck that much which is which is okay as well it doesn't mean because you like to google things that you're somehow a better person than other people but i just find the whole like ai assistant thing to be a little bit overblown a little bit too much like as if everyone not everybody wants an assistant you know some people just want to exist and do their thing they don't they don't need the help and everything else so i don't know it just feels a little bit strange it feels a little bit strange um but overall amazing um de demos i love everything that they're doing um google had you know of course one a, a really cool one and the google one was really cool as well because they had um i forgot the guy but the guy that does all the fucking he does all the improvised tunes and shit and he perches up in like a town center somewhere and does all the improvised tunes so he was also there and i was thinking while he was there would you be open to selling out on this level because this is when you know you've definitely sold out right when you decide to like link up with google and do the same thing that you're already known to do on their sort of platform this is like when you've reached critical mass this has become you've now become a normie mainstream favorite Obviously, you're super rich, but you're no longer the core creative underground artist that you once were. You've now become a bit of a mainstream, you know, cliche type of thing. But I wonder if it's okay to do nowadays because it's so hard to make it in whatever art form that you're in, especially in the creative field. Um, there's so much competition out there, limited opportunities, limited amount of limited maybe resources and no, limited amount of monies to be spread out across the board. Maybe if you can sell out to this level, it's actually a good thing. I don't know. No way. Don't worry, baby. Google's gonna wake you right up. Google's gonna come into bed and wake you right up. Don't worry about it, baby. Google wake you right up. <laughs> as soon as you know it, Google's gonna wake you up. You're gonna be up once Google has something to say. You're gonna be right up with that. I said you're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up. You're up right now. It doesn't matter if you didn't have any coffee, baby. Google's gonna wake you right up. Up! Google's gonna wake you up. And by the way, one thing I also discovered, many, many Indians working for Google, isn't it? Is that because of Sundai Pachai or just because Indians are really smart? A lot of Indians in the crowd are like, wow, there's a lot of Indians that work at fucking Google. Props. But god damn it, man. He sold out fast, didn't he? It felt like just the other day, you know, you first discover him on YouTube and shit, or you stumble on the video on Twitter, and all of a sudden he's performing here on this big boy stage at Google, singing Google songs, wearing a Google AI robe and shit. You're like, oh, God, bro. I know the money must be, like, it, it, the, the money on this for this particular gig must be life changing or even not even the money the opportunity because this profile it gives you is massive so imagine the pro you know the gigs you get after it but i don't know a part of me feels like maybe you should i forgot who the man was again um r.i.p to him but the ex-manager of the sex pistols i remember reading a book about him once where he had a really kind of interesting way to kind of look at selling out where essentially he said the goal for all artists should be to sell out so that you can take the money that you make from selling out and then put it back into the work that you do in the underground, sort of like taking from the rich and giving back to the poor type of thing. But I sometimes think to myself, if you did get the opportunity to sell out, there's no way you're going back to the underground. If you start getting picked up in like Uber X's and Cadillacs and Escalades and shit, you start to get like business, no, first class seats, maybe a private jet, right you start to get fucking your entire rider gets fulfilled you start to get like you know ground service look what you call it um uh car service to and from the hotel to the location back again right like there's no way you're gonna go back to carrying your own bags <laughs> buying your own lunch there's no way you're gonna do that no way and i completely understand it because most of us especially the ones who toil in the creative field we have to struggle for a long time to get anywhere. And when you do finally get somewhere, the last thing you want to do is go backwards. The last thing you want to do is go backwards. So I completely understand it, but I just don't know if I can sell out to this level. Google, singing a Google song. Google's gonna, it's like, what? 
come on, bro. If you're going to sell out, sell out with a bit of class, a bit of tact. You don't need to put a whole robe on, get a fucking Android tattoo and shit on you, tattoo fucking Gemini under your eye. That's a bit too much, you know, but, you know, I guess you got to sell it. I guess you got to sell it. So congrats to him. Congrats to him anyway. He got to the bag. He got to the bag. Talking about someone that might not be getting to the bag. We have to talk about the story that just broke a couple of hours ago regarding DJ Academics. Man, this is a tough one. So, if you're a fan or if you're a viewer or if you're aware of Academics, you would have known that he did share this story a while back. And he shared this story a while back because the lady in question had gone viral somewhat because she accused Academics... No, she accused Academics' his friends of running a train on her. And it wasn't voluntary. It was obviously a grape train. And academics' defense at the time was that this particular lady, he invited back to her house, back to his home um, one night, but he got too drunk when he was at the party. So, sorry, they were at a party before, him and this lady and his friends. And then he'd got too drunk at the party, went home. And then when he was going home, when, he was, when they were at home together, they were about to get it on. But academics was too drunk and he fell asleep. So when he fell asleep, he got put into his room to sleep and she stayed up and to hang out with his two other friends who are still up, who, who were in the house with academics. Those two other friends, according to academics, ended up fucking this girl and he ended up seeing it all on the cameras because he's got CCTV cameras all around his mansion or and inside, I'm assuming. And, it said, and I think he also said he's got audio. So it was kind of funny because he was almost making it seem like he was weirdly getting off on the fact that his friends were smashing a girl that he wanted to smash, but he was also sad about it. It was also, it was weird. It was kind of simpy, incelly type of stuff. Odd, but regardless. Then he confronts the girl in the morning, oh, what happened? And then she kind of doesn't want to confess. So academics in his wise nature decide to try and like shame her into confessing what happened, even though he knows what happened. So then that leads to some sort of altercation, some sort of whatever. She ends up leaving in a half. And then I guess off the back of that, the girl that Academics was involved with long term, that Shay Glizzy girl, she gets involved somehow and she threatens to leak this because she allegedly has more information that he allegedly grabbed this girl. In an effort to get in front of the story, Academics comes out and starts to really pile onto this girl that accused him of rape and actually, you know, just be unnecessarily mean on with her online. And I remember when I was watching it at the time, I was thinking, this isn't a good tactic. Like, you know, there's no, there's no wrath like a woman scorned. So trying to publicly humiliate a young girl who already doesn't want to admit that she might have had a train ride on her right she's maybe a bit embarrassed about it and maybe wants to try and like spin it another way is a bit wild especially if you were drunk and you don't really remember what happened because i also felt like the story originally didn't make much sense so this girl that you were going to hook up with you start getting it on in a club you get too drunk you come back home you fall asleep, which I can completely understand because it happened to me before, where you just fall asleep at the pla at the moment of like, you know, action and shit. That can happen if you're too drunk or maybe you can't even, you know, get ready. So you fall asleep, your friends end up doing what they do, end up doing what they did with the lady. I said, allegedly it was consensual. And then you wake up and you don't also partake or you don't try. It just doesn't make any sense. What, what what like it just doesn't make any sense like or you weren't awake yourself either that whole story was a bit fishy like he went to sleep and just left his friends up with this girl by herself like it just didn't make any sense to me and also why would she stay up by herself with two people that she didn't know i don't know whatever it sounded a bit shaky if i if if i was in his position i don't think i would have gone that hard at the girl in the first place because you if you have the video footage of on the camera that shows you what happened there's no need to argue with this girl back and forth online. Just leave it, leave it be. Like, there's no need to kind of poke, you know, there's no need to kind of um, antagonize the girl, embarrass her online, because who knows, you know, maybe in the moment she wanted to do what she wanted to do, but maybe later she regretted it, which is perfectly fine as well. But then you constantly trying to like, you know, embarrass her to try to clear your name. It's only going to make her go on the defensive. And maybe this is the defense. Or... He completely lied about the whole entire thing and he didn't actually grape this girl, which is completely wild because his career is fucked and it's so mad because the timing couldn't be worse. 
he just came off one of the best periods of his life i think he said he's made the most money he's ever made right streaming online covering the drake and kendrick stuff he's been the go-to place he broke records right he literally broke records he took over from you know he basically snatched the fucking torch away from fucking um flex funk flex and shit and then off the back of that this happens it's like ugh. Whenever, whenever two, <laughs> whenever good things happen, you know Bap is about to follow. But the allegations are a bit wild. Let me just tell you this: the allegations are a bit wild. So this is courtesy of Rolling Stones. The headline reads: DJ Academics sued for grape and defamation. DJ Academics is facing a new lawsuit accusing him of grape, a sexual assault, and defamation. The lawsuit was filed by Fauzia Zia Abash, who dated the internet personality real name Livingston Allen. That's a fucking hilariously Caribbean name for a guy that just, you know, doesn't really look that Caribbean. But we continue. After meeting him online in 2021, Abash um, alleges that July 16, on 2022, Allen contacted her and invited her to his house in New Jersey, not suspecting ill intentions, even though they allegedly hadn't seen each other for almost a year. When Abash arrived, however, she was met by two men identified as Joe, John Doe 1 and John Doe 2, whom she did not expect to be there. Abash claims the two men drugged her, drugged her drink and, pl and plied her with alcohol before assaulting and graping her on Alan's pool deck. Now, this part I remember him saying as well. In the video, he says when he, when he basically tried to like, you know, defend himself, he was saying that when he woke up in the morning, he watched the CCTV footage and he could see that that girl that he invited back and his friends were getting it on in the pool and he said it looked like they were enjoying it like it was consensual so if he's got a video footage this should be an easy case to throw out but if it's not <laughs> if the video footage says the contrary or is kind of inconclusive he's in big trouble bro he's in big trouble abash says the drugs impacted her memory caused her to lose consciousness according to the suit she claims she later woke up at 4 a.m. on July 17th in a bedroom with Alan, who was pulling her hair and prying open her legs and brutally graping her. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, mate. <laughs> Could you imagine the terror of a young lady waking up and seeing that wide face with those sausage fingers, right? With those fingers covered in fucking Berg, you know, Big Mac sauce trying to split your legs open and shit can you imagine the terror that must befell a young lady seeing that hungry face trying to get in god almighty bro um abash accuses alan of penetrating her anally and vaginally and says that she was begging him to stop and crying for most of the assault but losing her ability to move physically <sighs> details bro they they are really going into the descriptive details aren't they fucking hell the following day according to a lawsuit abash asks alan for details about what happened the previous night he allegedly showed her a trash can that contained two condom wrappers which suggested to abash that after the alleged pool deck attack the two john does had taken her into another room in the house and continued to grape her brutally abash also claimed that alan showed her surveillance footage of the alleged pool deck attack this can't be true right this can't be this this doesn't make sense so he allegedly graped her his friends graped her she asks him in the morning hey what the fuck happened and then he shows her footage of the grape this doesn't make sense does it as brennan would say it, it don't make sense it don't make sense according to mrs bush as she watched the video she looked like she was just lying there lifeless which is not sit right. okay cool so maybe he maybe he didn't think the video was bad so he showed her in a way to kind of it's like when dudes think sending a girl an unsolicited dick pic is like flirty it's not in it it's, it's a form of sexual harassment you should probably chill so maybe he thought showing her the video she'd be like turned on but then she watched the video and was like um i don't look like i'm awake oof According to the text messages included in the lawsuit, later that day on July 17th, Alan told Abash to get tested. Oh, academics, bro. Get tested. And said, didn't he say in, on the stream that he didn't even do anything with her? So why is he telling her to get tested? Abash said he, she found the statement odd. The suit urges that the text was proof that Alan had not slept with her, Mr. Abash, for over a year engaged in unprotected sexual intercourse with her that night alan did not reply to a request so 
they're alleging that because he uh, I don't know if that's true though because he could have he could have texted her to say get tested because of when he saw the video footage of his of his friends because I remember he said in the, actually I remember in the stream he did say in the stream he didn't see his friends put on a condom so maybe he told her to get tested because he saw his friends on the CCTV footage not putting on a condom before they did their business now why would he care i don't know because you know it's none of my business why would i be texting you to, i mean like i brought you home and then you end up smashing my like i never understood why he wasn't even angry at his friends either academics is a very odd individual he kind of like tried to get in front of the story by shaming a girl that was you know and the circumstances around it were very shit were very like murky which made no sense and then he didn't also seem to have a grudge he didn't seem to hold a grudge against the two boys that allegedly had smashed his friend or his like you know his situation it's like what's going on here um after contacting her lawyer for advice a bash went to the police the authorities first told her to visit a hospital for a rape kit which she did the kit purportedly led to the discovery of traces of alan's sperm she claims a bash then spoke <laughs> yo these ladies like i think just having sex with academics anyway you deserve something honestly <laughs> you, um, obviously you can't be you know falsely accusing people but just putting yourself in a position where you have to like let that guy be on top of you you probably deserve something like maybe a couple couple grand 10k or something because god almighty bro can you imagine that gut on top of you as you're a lady that wide face like you know he doesn't wash like i don't know i get the feeling that guy doesn't wash that much you know like <sighs> a bush then spoke with the authorities in person and photographs were taken to bruises on the bush arms back buttocks and legs oh my and this is a black girl too by the way so if she's bruised up like that that has to be like some level of force in it fuck a bush also sat for a recorded wire call with alan during which she claimed alan graphically recounted and admitted to having sexual intercourse with her even going so far to describe her vag oh my god academics describe her vagina you know what's really you know what's really mad about this situation i could see a such i could see a scenario where he didn't do what he's accused of but because he's such a vulgar like not even vulgar not because he's such an inexperienced man with women I could imagine him doing this and thinking he's like, you know, putting her out, like putting her in her place. Like he's got that, you know, it's those fresh and fit, that fresh and fit, like, you know, school of seduction. is just full of nerds, like geeks with money, like dorks, not even nerds, dorks with money, losers with money who basically try and overcompensate um, by acting incredibly, um, what's that thing called? Incredibly confrontational with women just like being aggro and being aggressive and vulgar and just just doing all that stuff as a way to kind of put women in their place it's almost like um it's almost like a couple of levels above being an incel really because kind of deep down a lot of them you feel like don't really like women anyway they kind of just they kind of despise them in a way because maybe they have like really bad because i've always thought i've always thought there's like a there's a reality where being an incel makes sense for some guys there's a reality where it's somewhat justifiable for you to have an a, a, a crazy amount of hate for women especially if you've been rejected in a very hurtful way i can see that being understandable right obviously when you go and do something to you know to kind of act upon it you're obviously crossing the line but incels that kind of like you know because that kind of rejection from women people don't especially if you're not a woman if you're not a guy like trying to make a move on somebody that you're interested in and then being told in you know in no uncertain terms that you are not worthy or being told it in a very rude way can really hurt you um, especially if you've got a fragile ego fragile personality you're not all there in the head it can do real madness to you but there are some guys who are probably even more menacing than that where they hold on to all those grudges and then one day once they get on they take it out on everybody else you know like in terms of their relationships they start like just being just cunts to girls to kind of get back on all the girls that told them no when they're in college and i sometimes get the feeling like that from academics like and again not to be mean but this guy wouldn't be fucking much if he wasn't who he was unfortunately 
not because of what he looks like, just because of his attitude. You know, he's a bit of a loser. Um, losers can, you know, have six packs as well. I just think that's the main thing. And I think a lot of them, and I don't really know why this is the case. I would love to know why. Because part of me thinks, if I grew up a loser and I didn't have any luck with women, but then I happened to then become one of the biggest streamers and hip hop platforms in the world, I'd want to work on myself a bit. I don't know about you, but I would, I would want to prove to myself that I could fuck without money. Like, I wouldn't want to have the feeling that I'm only getting what I'm getting because I've got a gold chain and a nice car. I'd want to prove to myself that I could do it, right? That's what I'd want to do. But a lot of these guys don't seem to care. Like, academics looks like shit. He talks like, you know, he doesn't really try to, like, have any sort of riz or game. It's just about, yeah, I could pay your fucking bills. I can fly you out. Do you want a new bag? You know what I mean? Like, it's all that kind of game, which is, I guess, you know, there's a, probably a beauty to it. Should be able to just, like, take a 10 and give her 10 grand and get her to do whatever you want and get to do whatever you want with her and stuff. I guess there's some sort of a law in that. For me, I don't really get it. I would never do that sort of thing ever in a million years. I'd rather fucking die lonely than ever do that sort of stuff. But unfortunately for a lot of these guys, this situation is not uncommon because they have such little experience with women. I could understand this being something that could easily happen. So... <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. This led the cops to obtain a warrant for the surveillance footage and other device evidence. A batch later claimed that Allen disposed of several items, bed sheets, at the dumpster news office. Presumably, Mr. Allen was attempting to destroy the evidence. Despite taking an allegation to the police, a batch chose silence per her lawsuit and, and ostensib ostensibly decided not to press charges. Her decision to bring the lawsuit comes after the accused allegations were brought to light at the end of 2023 after both she and Alan addressed the incident on social media. The funny thing is about it as well is that Academics has been going extra hard on Diddy based on the lawsuit as well. So now he had his own lawsuit. Fucking wild how that shit works, isn't it? <laughs> that Diddy karma's real. Despite taking um, um, Alan denied assaulting Abash and in the 30th of December 2023 video, he claimed he was asleep while the two John Doe's allegedly assaulted her on the pool deck. Acknowledging the surveillance footage of the alleged attack, Alan said she was getting trained on by two men on my pool deck. The suit alleges defamed Alan defamed the bash by accusing her of voluntarily having an orgy with his friends at his home while maintaining that he never participated at all. The suit goes on to allege that Alan knew his statements in the video were misleading and false and he was in possession of the text messages from Abash where she stated that she didn't know what happened on her July 16th. In a statement, Abash said, I'm not confident that the social that justice will prevail and the veil be removed. Her lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, added, litigation is always the last result. After several unsuccessful attempts to probably resolve the case, Mr. Abash left no choice other than to foul Miss Allen's hubris will be let his downfall. That's a really good line because I feel like let's ma let's imagine a scenario where he actually did it. I also have a feeling, based on what I remember for when it happened, that maybe the girl was looking for a payday, which isn't a bad thing. All things considered, if you actually did what you did and you can get away with it by writing a check, do your shit and whatever. But I also feel like the arrogance and the kind of the bravado and the cockiness he was talking with, he kind of walked himself into this lawsuit. Because there's a, there is a scenario where he could have just paid her off and it could have just went away. Or he could have just ignored it. Because I also never understood why he was so quick to tell everybody that he had a CCTV, you know, closed circuit TV system in his house, like inside that recorded audio also. Why are you making that public? Why are you voluntarily offering up that information? Wouldn't you want to keep that close to your chest for your own protection or whatever? Like he was so quick to let that be known so that it would make him seem innocent but then it also seemed weird that he'd run to watch the footage in detail watching his friends fucking one of his girls that he wanted to be with and then be okay with it it just didn't make any sense so again i don't really know what to say i don't really know how to read into it i just know that it kind of sounds mad <laughs> and most likely to make it go away he'll probably have to pay something you know Maybe he would just be like out of kind of principle. He would just go with it until the end. But to help it make it go away. And the, and the sad thing about the situation is that more than likely, not sad thing, but I guess the consequence of this will be that his streaming career is going to be fine. He's never going to suffer. I think that's one thing we've discovered with um, 
we've discovered with um what you call it with cancel culture nowadays in the social media age if you've got a following online it's almost impossible to ha- to get you cancelled to get yourself cancelled it's not going to happen because your your you know your community is going to help you but the it's going to hold you up but the issue he's going to have is the big platforms they're going to want to step away from him because those type of allegations are way too hot and spicy for regular corporations and platforms to kind of side with or kind of turn a blind eye to so that's his major issue and you know working all this working as hard as he did to get to where you are now and to have all these platforms like spotify and all these other you know music label record labels as well that you're working in the background decide to pull away from you that's going to hurt your pocket a lot um and it's also a stink you can't you know you can't really shake unfortunately um so i'm going to play actually a clip of here that features academics kind of talking about it right um there's two clips i want to play there's a clip where he talks about it and a clip of the woman where she basically speaks about academics kind of defaming her and again he could have avoided this if he just would have kept his mouth shut but he was so insistent on trying to get in front of the story and another thing is so just to kind of make this story extra fucking diabolical if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken the reason why this all got blown up anyway was because of that Shay Glizzy girl. That Shay Glizzy girl, that mixed race girl who's been causing academics only t- trouble, right? The, the, I think that's the girl that got him to say, I'm the prize, I'm the prize, that, you know, that monumental night when he was in Vegas. That young lady, I think, was the one that went on social and said, oh, Ak has got some grape stuff on his, on his, you know, on his docket. He's got some grape, you know, allegations on his jacket. And then he had to then come out and defend himself. So that woman has not only allegedly assaulted his mum, stole money from him, like, you know, uh, maybe backdoored him with that home burglary thing, exposed him for having, you know, STIs and shit and all those horrible pictures that he took. She she now might be responsible for this lawsuit in a weird way. But this is the video originally when it came out. So this is when it came, this is back in the day. Um, the woman that, that claims she um, said, this is for courtesy of Glot Topics. The woman academics came, slept with his two friends while he was asleep, took to her YouTube to say he's fabricated a story, accusing him also of raping her. So listen to this woman speak. And again, we don't know. This is all us just, you know, trying to make sense of what people are saying. It's a bit he said, she said. But listen to this girl talk. Does she sound like she's lying? I look crazy right now, but I'm not going to stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. That's not what happened, academics. You know that that's not what happened. And for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, for you to pretend that you didn't do anything, that I just went to your house and I'm just some thought, like we didn't know each other for two years. You tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me. Whether or not you got drunk or not, I know that when you woke up, you were on top of me too. You raped me too, and a test, a rape kit was done. You know what? I'm gonna come back with my own story. This what you wanted, and you're about to get it. I've been quiet for way too long. Oh, I don't know, man. She doesn't sound like she's chatting shit. That sounds like a woman that's been publicly embarrassed, made to look like a hole, and then has been trying to deal with things behind the scenes quietly and has had enough. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like he could have dealt with this privately and it probably would have went away. But he went on his platform, tried to play the big boy, tried to act like he didn't care, that his friend smashed his friend. Like, tried to do whatever he was trying to do. And then, now look what's happened. I don't, again, I don't know. Who knows what's right or what's not right. All I know, this is another unintended consequence of that horrendous fresh and fit red pill andrew tate way of kind of treating women because none of these guys are gentlemen because none of these guys ever got girls before they got famous or because they got money it's now causing these issues that we're seeing now with these kind of like almost these like adult infants that have the money to act like adults but then have the brain of literal children and put themselves in situations where sometimes the allegations are false but they still put themselves in shit situations like the other guy from fresh and fit who got that um that chinese lady pregnant and shit right um or actually might have done something crazy because they don't you know because they're fucking dumb idiots whatever it may be 
But either way, this is just a consequence of just these guys having no understanding of like how to move, you know, just moving like like waste men, like simple as that. Just absolute wildads. It's absolutely insane. It really fucking is just diabolically insane. But again, I don't know jack shit. I'm just a minor person talking out my arsehole. I know absolutely nothing in that regard. I know nothing, but let's see how it plays out. Um, it probably won't end well for um, either party, but, you know, at least maybe there'll be some lessons learned and people can kind of continue on from there. People can continue on from there. Okay, moving on and want to play for you here the last bit of footage, which is this particular video that was taken by Ray Footage on Twitter that features the one and only Joseph Capriati playing in Amnesia in Ibiza. Now, I saw this clip and I, was to my, I went to myself, you know what? This does, to me, represent why I've always said there's far more, co there's far more in common with the top quote-unquote DJs and the worst DJs in the world. I think the best, especially in business techno, have way more in common with the worst DJs you've ever heard in your life at a local par and bub because at a lo local bar and a pub or a bar and a bub, whatever I fucking said there. Because this music is fucking horrendous, as is the fucking culture of people standing and being packed behind the DJ booth with their phones out. It's just all absolutely horrendous. But just listen to the music. Listen to the fucking music. Like how many cameras do you need? You've got someone with an SLR, someone with a phone, another phone, another phone. Like how many cameras do you need to catch this horrendous, generic, shitty pop edit? Like how many do you need to catch this horrendous, shitty moment in this brightly lit club somewhere in the middle of, Ab of Ibiza? How many people do you need to catch this horrendous Barclays advert coded nonsense, shitty music? Honestly. Do you really need that? Who needs to capture this? Who needs to rewatch this in 4K? Who needs to watch this in HD? Who even needs to hear this? If a if an EasyJet plane careered into this building, nobody would care. <laughs> obviously as well it's just wall-to-wall -wall caucasian it's just wall-to-wall -wall hellman's mayonnaise wall-to-wall -wall fucking you know cheese on so what you could it's wall-to-wall -wall fucking french fries covered in cheese wall-to-wall -wall fanta with a bit of vodka wall-to-wall -wall cheeky bump with the lads wall to wall side bags wall to wall shades and swinging jaws just the worst <laughs> go, like no one's even dancing they're just waiting to capture the moment that the beat drops they're not even dancing motherfuckers they're just waiting to hear the beat drop that's all they're waiting for When's the beat gonna drop? When's the beat gonna drop so I can capture it on my fucking Android and share it with my 40 friends on Instagram and hashtag it with 75 tags? Hopefully, DJ will see it. Fucking nonsense. <laughs> you know what should have happened? As the beat dropped, that whole canopy, that whole balcony should have dropped on top of them. That would have been amazing. That would have set the place on fire. If that whole canopy would have dropped on top of the people underneath them, that would have actually added to the mood, like boom, an actual drop. Or the speakers held up on the plinths actually dropped on someone's head mid fucking K bump. That would have been quite beneficial. But God almighty, and the funny thing about it, that Joseph Capriati guy, right? He's probably one of the best, one of the best DJs in that, field probably one of the highest paid as well and that's the type of music that, that guy's playing horrendous horrendous and the thing about it as well didn't his dad attack him his dad stabbed him didn't he 
I'm sure I remember seeing a story where his dad stabbed him and he nearly died. Yeah, there we go. His dad stabbed him in some sort of, you know, family fucking argument. And you'd imagine if your dad stabbed you and you nearly died, wouldn't you come back and, com you know, commit to yourself to playing good music? Wouldn't you think, oh, I got this second chance at life. Now I'm going to really make a change. I'm going to try and reinvent myself as an artist. I'm going to try and inspire the kids to create interesting music and have different influences and really try and push the sound and challenge myself and inspire people and just blah, 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 blah. How are you going to get stabbed in the chest by your dad and then come back to life and then play business techno, play deep house, play tech house? Isn't that a waste of life? To get stabbed in the chest and nearly die and come back to life and play that. The, alleged, the two allegedly got into a fight during Capriotti's father stabbed his son in the chest with a kitchen knife. The weapon has been recovered by the police. Capriotti was taken to Hopeswell in Casaretta, Italy, and his father has been arrested for the attempted murder. <laughs> his dad nearly killed him. Probably because he played that music, right? Imagine at a Christmas party. Like your, your mom and dad are making food they're chilling they're having some wine and shit and then you decide to fucking grab the ox cable and you play this shit it's probably understandable why his dad tried to thank you his dad was like look you're not listening to what, his dad's probably like you're not listening to the words that I'm saying turn the music off turn it off turn the music off <laughs> He's like, you're going to used to know me soon. You probably won't know me anymore because you won't be alive. Can you imagine surviving a stabbing to the chest with a kitchen knife? And Italians like to cook. So that kitchen knife was sharp. Mama probably sharpens that cooking, that kitchen knife. Those are not blunt, like, you know, English people knives where they're blunt and they're covered in rust or mold. These are Italian people. They cook. So that knife has been sharpened. That slit in, slit out. You come back to life and then you're playing this shit. I can't, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. It really does confuse me. But again, like I said, these guys are some of the most highest paid DJs. Let's, let's actually have a butcher's. What is his booking fee? Does anybody know? Look at that. Look at that. The final booking is contingent of many variables. An example of the fee to book Joseph Capriati is starting the range is 75 thousand dollars to 104 you know what's really funny about this range by the way he gets paid anywhere between seventy five thousand dollars to one hundred and forty nine fifty thousand dollars you know what's funny about this range this is kind of how much i get paid <laughs> to dj just minus a few zeros between anywhere between seventy five dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> so he gets paid you know a couple more zeros than i do and he doesn't decides to play this shit <laughs> he looks like he should be fucking serving me fucking a lamb sheesh on the way from fucking Dawson. That's what he should be giving me. He looks like he should be giving me a fucking donor on the way home. Not playing this fucking garbage. And also, I guarantee you, I guarantee you this guy right here recording with his phone. I guarantee you he hasn't watched that video back since he recorded. I guarantee you this guy here recording taking so much time to record, getting the angles right, zooming in, zooming out. I guarantee you he hasn't rewatched that clip since he recorded it. But he was there capturing it. I must capture. I must capture. For what reason? Just in, just put the fucking peel in your mouth, have a couple of bumps, and enjoy the fucking tunes. You don't need to record this shit. You're not missing out on anything. It's horrible anyway. <laughs> I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's fucking garbage. But again, like I said, the worst DJs in the world have way more in common with the best DJs in the world because they both play shitty music. <laughs> the only difference is, you know, the worst get paid 
in drink tokens and he gets paid in all the money so i guess congrats in that respect but god almighty man what an absolute horror show but to be fair to joseph to be fair to joseph capriati i'm not really a fan of that whole like dj booth culture thing where you turn the dj booth into like a de facto green room or vip set actually it's a vip section nowadays right the dj booth is like a vip section nowadays i don't really like it i think dj booths should be left only for the djs and the artist that's it no one else needs to be there right in my personal opinion i don't think anyone else needs to be in a dj booth apart from the artist but there are some people who make that whole dj booth culture thing work visually right they make they, they turn it into a bit of a party it turns into a bit of a turn up and maybe the people behind the booth actually make the people in the crowd get really hype like when you're dancing and you're kind of flailing in energy it's probably nice to look up at the crowd look up at the dj booth and see the dj going crazy like patrick mason or the or the people behind the booth having a really good time and one people that do it really well is this group called kind of music kind of music do this really fucking well there's this group called kind of music with these three djs called adam port ramfa and anmi and they have a really good culture of people standing behind the booth with them right i'll get actual a little picture here so i can see you show you what i mean but when kind of music play they do a really good job of having people behind them in the booth while they're fucking enjoying themselves right and it actually does look like fun i'm not gonna lie it does look like a lot of fun the people behind the booth kind of add to the atmosphere of the fucking rave itself um here it is on the screen you see the kind of music um cloud thing with the name on it you see all these bodies at the back here having a dance this is the free kind of music djs obviously there so the dj booth culture thing is like a thing for them right the vip section behind the back whatever with their friends and family all having a laugh and it's all kind of you know jovial everyone's hugging each other loads of air kisses maybe people are passing around baggies and shit but it works for them so this is all well and good but what i hate with people like this is this type of attitude and again this is very nitpicky and probably most people won't care or won't understand what i'm talking about but i completely do hate this type of attitude where you invite people up there to kind of add to the atmosphere of the rave you make it part of your brand and then you start to do this i want to say it's a big time thing but it's almost kind of like unnecessarily rude because if you don't have people behind there, then this wouldn't happen anyway. Let me play the clip for you. So as you can see there, there's a guy here in the glasses who's really excited, having a good time, and he's like, air he's like air pretending to dial the knobs as the dj here um i think this is and me is playing he's not really impeding and me when he's playing he's not really close to the mixer really there's tons of people around right next to him right up his bum so it's not like he's the only one there but then when adam port rocks up to the dj booth he takes it upon himself to tell the guy to like relax it's like motherfucker look around us everybody's doing it everybody's kind of here i'm just happen to be the one guy that's like you know air knobbing the fucking mixer in the air why are you telling me to relax why don't you move everybody back and then i wouldn't fucking be here in the first place it's just that attitude I don't, and again maybe it's just me i just it, I, like i don't want anybody in the booth anyway but if you're gonna have people in the booth don't pick me up because i don't because the, the thing the, the main issue he has this guy here that's you know gurning and having a good time he doesn't have tits if he had tits and really soft wet buttery lips and he had that sydney sweeney like landed on her head kind of like bonk look about her right he wouldn't have touched him and said him told him to chill out but the fact that it's some dude in some glasses and a fucking you know body warmer it's like bro back off man let the horse come through you're not a horse so you can back up over there but it's like bro i'm having a good time why are you telling me to relax <laughs> look he's not even that he's not even that close look how far away the mixer is the mixer's here there's a lady here there's a woman standing behind him another guy there there's loads of people behind the dj but adam paul picks out this particular dude because he looks like a a swiss finance bro right he looks like a finance bro from zurich who's who's like on fucking spring break whatever he's probably not the coolest looking guy in the world but he's having a good time leave him alone he paid his ticket he paid his fucking price he, he got his wristband 
He's got a fucking pocket full of eight balls. He might, you know, willingly or by force, you know, do have some sexual relations with a young lady in his hotel later. So what? Let him do his thing. Look, it, it, it tells him to go to the back. He points to the back. Adam Paul, smug face, points to the He tells him, hey, you got a dick and balls. You got to go back there. <laughs> You're not a 21 year old girl from fucking Spain that wants to intern for us. You gotta go back over there. You've got a beard. You gotta go back over there, bro. Like, can you imagine the fucking like? If you t honestly, this is this is why sometimes when it comes to the scene, I don't really ingratiate myself or I don't I can't really blend in too well because I'm too much of a normal person. As much as I love the music, I love the scene, and eventually I will become like a fucking, you know, world famous fucking DJ out here touring the world and whatnot. There's a part of me that's still like a normal guy. And I'm just not gonna let some guy just touch me and tell me where to go. Like, who the fuck are you? Get your fucking hands off me. And then that immediately turns into a confrontation that immediately turns into an altercation. And now suddenly we're fucking rolling on the floor, covering ourselves in fucking, you know, in fucking vodka and gin. And, you know, girls are screaming now, you know, whatever. Like, it's just going to be a situation. We're going to be wrestling on the floor, like, you know, like some real gay boys. And then what? For nothing. But why are you telling me to leave just because I don't have a vagina? <laughs> and obviously the guy got cucked he told him to calm down he's like yes adam you're the prof you're the professional dj yes adam can i suck your dick he's like nah you're not a fucking 19 year old girl from barcelona you don't get to suck it look there's a there's a girl there with uh, with an amazing set by the way standing right there look adam port didn't tell her to move did he Adam Paul didn't tell this this girl right here. He didn't tell this girl right here with the fucking, um, you know, young lady milkers. He didn't tell her to move, did he? He didn't tell this 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 fucking snow bunny, eh? He didn't tell this fucking you know, um, Gothenburg hottie, huh? He didn't tell this fucking <laughs> Copenhagen. <laughs> Copenhagen slaw to move she gets to stay but my guy in a body warmer or the body vest he gets a told to go to the back justice for the zurich finance bro justice for the zurich finance bro with the circular glasses he did nothing wrong he's just having a good time everyone does this he's doing that thing that normie girls you remember that's what the thing that normie girls do right um normie girl dj it's that it's that thing they do dj booth right it's that picture that all the girls do when the DJ's playing they want to put the headphones on and they pretend they're playing do you know what i mean he's doing that like boy version of that like you know like yeah like this see this thing hit right here the that's the dj and then they come in like they want to fucking take a picture that's what he, that's all he's doing it's fucking harmless let him do his thing and then just like usher him to the back we don't need to tell him to fucking oh relax go back there you have no peanut you have no vagina like fuck off and i and i normally like adam paul but he does have a little bit of a i don't know he comes across like he's got that kind of you know he's got that sort of attitude where he'd give you like a he'd give you a handshake where he kind of would like only touch your fingers that's kind of limp wristed one he seems like a bit of a cunt i'm not gonna lie just observation wise the other guys seem pretty cool but adam paul always seemed a bit like a cunt <laughs> Look, there's actually look, there's two. There's two Gothenburg hotties. There's one there and one there. They don't get told to move. And they're right next to Anmi. Right up to his shoulder. As he's walking by doing his DJ thing, he's probably his elbows probably brushing their fucking scandy tits. Their IKEA fucking boobs are probably getting scrubbed, but but don't, they, they don't get told to move. Oh, there's another hottie right there. Right next to him, she don't get, she doesn't get told to move either. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's so hard being a straight male in the dance music scene because most DJs don't want you to talk to them because you're a dude, and most parties you go to cater towards like the LGBTQ crowd anyway, and they don't want you in a party because you're gonna, you know, try and fuck everything that moves. Being a straight dude in the dance music scene is kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie justice for straight males justice for straight males 
Anyway, that's it. That's like the Usera Casino Zinger Show, episode number 778. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. Really flipping has. I enjoyed it. I loved it. And I can't wait to see all of you guys once again very, 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 very soon. I'm going to play my tune today, AJ Cook. Let's play an AG Cook. AG Cook dropped a new album, actually, which I'm a big fan of, called Britpop. It's, I've been banging it in the gym. It maybe was one of the best things I've listened to in a fucking long time. So I'm going to play A.G. Cook's song from his new album called Britpop. And the tune that I'm going to play is probably going to be called You Know Me. Let's play that. Let's play A.G. Cook, You Know Me, courtesy of his new album called Britpop as my tune of the day. And for those of you who are tuning in via the audio side of the pod, make sure you leave me a five-star review, pretty please, on your audio platforms or, or Overcast, Apple Music, whatever it may be. And if you're watching the stream, obviously like the stream that'd be greatly appreciated links to myself can be found down below and i'll see all you guys again very very soon so let's play this and get it going thank you for tuning in see you guys again very very soon